Welcome to the Canadian Immigration Answers podcast. My name is Mark Holthy and I practice with the law firm of Holthy Tillman in the beautiful province of Alberta, Canada. In this uh, podcast, we will be addressing the following question. I'm a food service supervisor currently working with a fast food franchise in the province of Alberta. I've submitted my Alberta Immigrant Nominee Program application. However, I have not yet received a nomination. I am concerned that the nomination will not come through in time for me to extend my work permit as I will be reaching the four-year cap on April the 1st, 2015. With the launch of Express Entry in January of 2015, can I qualify? Now, I get this question a lot, and in speaking with um, the head officials of the Alberta Immigrant Nominee Program, it is clear that there are over or close to 2,000 individuals currently in the queue waiting for their AINP to be uh, adjudicated and for them to receive their nomination. With the timing of work permits that are going to be expiring in April of next year, many people are really caught in limbo. And so the question becomes, uh, can we apply through the new Express Entry Program for permanent residents? Now, if we think back to the existing programs, because nothing has changed theoretically with the Canada Experience class, the Federal Skilled Worker Program, or the Federal Skilled Trade Programs, which are all uh, affected by this new uh, express entry scheme, the question becomes, can you qualify independently through one of those categories? So it may be possible for a food service supervisor who is a uh, skill level B or a skilled worker in Canada, that they could qualify under one of those programs. Now, usually the route that was followed was the Canada Experience class because all you would need is one year of experience and uh, a corresponding minimum level of at least five on the Canadian language benchmark, at least for skill level Bs, which are our food service supervisors. But there was a problem, and the problem was that the federal government created a list of ineligible occupations, and that was uh, included on it were cooks and food service supervisors, among others. Well, the reality, come January, that list will no longer exist. So it is absolutely possible for you to apply through Express Entry. Provided you have the necessary uh, level of English language ability and that you have a minimum of one year skilled work experience in Canada, then it is possible for you to apply. Now, one advantage that food service supervisors have is that, generally speaking, you are working on a labor market impact-based work permit. Well, under the new express entry system, that gives you a a definite step up over any other applicant that does not necessarily have an LMIA supporting their work permit. So you could have a CEO of a publicly traded company that came into Canada through one of the senior managerial level intercompany transfer provisions that didn't require an LMIA. And if you, as a food service supervisor, have an LMIA, you will be selected before that CEO. Now that sounds uh, like a pretty interesting uh, distinction, but the reality is there are a total of 1,200 points available for individuals who submit profiles to the express entry pool. Of those 1,200, 600 are given right off the bat for holding a labor market impact assessment. So our food service supervisor is automatically going to be ahead of that CEO, given the fact the uh, LMIA gives them 600 points. So if you're in that situation, uh, my recommendation is that you start the process immediately to uh, prepare to file your express entry profile at the earliest possible opportunity come January the 1st. And the reason is because you have to be drawn early if you're capping out on April the 1st. And when you submit your application, the first draw will come at the end of January of 2015. If you're fortunate enough to have your profile complete and 
be drawn and given an invitation to apply, then you also need to be prepared to file your permanent resident application immediately without any delay so that you um, can have that application received, assessed, and reach the first stage of approval where the government accepts it as being a complete application under one of those three permanent resident categories. Um, Ultimately, we're not exactly sure how they're going to be selecting individuals because they can choose generally uh, the applicants that rank the highest in terms of points. So whichever ones have the highest point level based on the 1,200 points uh, that they've established. But they also have the ability to select specific industry or to use different methods for ranking individuals. Um, But at this stage, if you are running out of time, then this is an option for you. So if you reach first stage of, of approval and your current work permit has not expired, in other words, it hasn't reached April 1st, 2015, then you can apply for a bridging work permit to essentially save your work status and continue working uh, on that open permit until permanent residence is ultimately received. And we know through express entry that they have indicated that will be uh, some point, but less than six months processing. So I hope that answer uh, clarifies that question, which I get a lot. Um, Ultimately, there's no guarantees because it's up to the government to decide who they wish to draw. But if you act quickly... We know that um, there are not going to be a lot of individuals with labor market impact assessments who will be um, who will be uh, submitting applications into Express Entry, and so it's very possible that you could be drawn. This concludes this portion of our Canadian Immigration Answers, and if you have any questions, feel free to go to my website uh, www.ht-llp.com and uh, you can leave a text message for us through our, um, our written interface or alternatively you can click on the sidebar, ask an immigration question and leave a, a digital voicemail for me. We will continue to group the questions that are similar and, and answer in as much detail as possible going forward here. So leave those questions, and if you have something of a a more specific uh, nature that you'd like to book a consult, please feel free to do that. Um, Our fee is uh, $100 for a 30-minute consult, and you will have the opportunity to speak with me. Take care, and signing off. Thank you for listening to the Canadian Immigration Podcast, your trusted source for information on Canadian law, policy, and practice. If you would like to contribute a question for future podcasts or wish to set up a legal consultation with Mark, please visit www.ht-llp.com.